It's important for Southern Baptists to, to understand that it is the responsibility of the trustees to guarantee theological fidelity. Now, the trustees have sought to do that in several ways. The most important way is in the election of Al Mola. I would expect our faculty, um, certainly all those who are hired to this faculty, and I would expect in the classroom for students to understand that Jesus Christ is the only Savior, to understand that, uh, that abortion is a great, great moral evil, to understand that homosexuality is a sin. And, again, uh, without apology, we are hoping that in the classroom, we are expecting that all those who are added uh, to this faculty uh, will uphold the position that the pastorate is a male office, uh, and though we support women in ministry, we do not uh, believe women should serve as pastor. From my personal standpoint, uh, we could not have done better uh, in uh, getting a president. Al Mola is tops in my view. When I met Dr. Mola in 1984, he was in the president's office serving as a special assistant to Roy Honeycutt. Al was the epitome of all that Southern Seminary men, and in relation to women in ministry, Southern Seminary was very supportive at that time of women in ministry and various leadership positions within the church. At the Southern Baptist Convention in 1984, I believe it was, uh, they passed a resolution prohibiting women from uh, being pastors. Why, he got a he started a protest movement of his own right here on this campus against that kind of thing. It was published in the Courier Journal. But now, that's the litmus test here for a faculty member coming in. If you, if you believe in the ordination of women, uh, you are out. You, 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 you cannot be a faculty member here. For all around us we see the ruins of once great churches and once great denominations which in the name of tolerance and modernity and inclusivity forfeited their integrity. Coming to the New Orleans Convention, uh, whispering to me in the press room on Tuesday morning, knowing that I was a moderate, that it did not look good for our side, and then after we had been defeated at that point and Roy Hunnicutt declared that any politicizing from our part was over, Amola returned to Georgia and his editorials took a hard right and began to become very political and very fundamentalist. Uh, there's this great uh, story that always gets told about Southern Seminary that you've made, in fact you may have noticed uh, while you were on campus that uh, there's not a cross on top of the chapel. Uh, in fact, there's a weather vane on top of the chapel and the story goes that every morning everyone has to go out on the lawn to see which way the theological winds are blowing so they'll know what to teach that day. And uh, Al Mohler, in my assessment, pretty much personifies that, uh, that story. It has been, I think, disconcerting for many of us who did know him before, and so recently when he was uh, uh, working on the other side, so to speak, and sometimes I still find myself taken aback, and I, I look at him and talk with him and, and expect the other, and then... Um, uh, a new voice comes out. In some ways it might have been easier to have someone who all of his life perhaps had had these, these points of view. Dr. Al Mohler is a man who lives his convictions with courage. Our convention listens prayerfully to Dr. Mohler, the president of Southern Seminary, and he'll bring our message from God's Word in just a few moments. For me, having known Al and watched this um, transformation of Al, uh, when pe other people would call him a fundamentalist, I would correct them and say he's an opportunist, uh, that there's a difference of conviction. I don't want to say that he's now not convinced and convicted against women and women's role in the church. I would just imagine that if Southern Seminary's 
atmosphere and political correctness changed once again back in favor of women serving in the role, I'm convinced that Al Mola would shift with it. There's no doubt that it appears that Al has been driven by his own ambitions, has no core convictions, and has just changed uh, as was necessary to further his own ecclesiastical uh, ladder climbing. I'm very pleased uh, about uh, the opportunity to deliver the convention sermon, especially in this sesquicentennial session. So look forward to that tomorrow morning. Well, <laughs> it's very simple. He, uh, I think he wanted to be president of Southern Baptist Seminary. I think he wanted to be a leader in the denomination. And to be a leader in the denomination, you've got to think, you've got to act, You've got to do what the uh, leadership of the convention requires. And in 1993, trustees elected Dr. Moeller to be the president of Southern Seminary. We knew that this was eventually, uh, at least I felt like eventually one day Dr. Moeller would be president of Southern Seminary just came a little sooner than, than I anticipated. The bottom line for Al Mohler in shifting the way he has shifted is that he truly wanted to be president of Southern Seminary. He did everything that he could to become president of Southern Seminary, and I would imagine that he'll do whatever it takes to be at Southern Seminary one year longer than the longest serving president of Southern Seminary. Well, that's, uh, th that's apocryphal and untrue. Uh, however, uh, that's a uh, it's a very difficult thing to, uh, uh, to respond to other than to say anyone who operates in uh, that kind of uh, uh, motive uh, doesn't deserve to be in service or leadership anywhere. And if, uh, if that's what brought me here, uh, that's, uh, uh, it's really untenable when one considers uh, the course of events over recent years. We must remember that Southern Baptists are a people of deep evangelical conviction. And yet we must recognize that the danger is ever present before us that we could become a cut flower denomination. Elton Trueblood once described America as a cut flower civilization, a flower that had been severed from its roots so that the bouquet still looks fragrant and beautiful and still possesses a pleasing aroma, but those with eyes to see and ears to hear know that the blossom once severed from the root is destined to die.